Yeah, and I think what a great segue into this topic this morning. And the feet, I feel like a lot of times, Tim, are so overlooked. We're told by a number of people, uh, whether it's uh, ads on TV or on social media, your doctor sometimes, your friends, you go into a store, uh, get comfortable shoes. And you absolutely, when you are walking long uh, periods of time or if you're going to Mid-America Truck Show, that's concrete. There, there is no support. There is no like nice cushy grass. Like you are walking on hard concrete. You absolutely want some good, comfortable shoes that aren't going to lead you to stiff back, stiff hamstrings, and aching feet. But outside of Mid-America Truck Show, I really want to encourage listeners today to consider to get the casts off. And cast like you break your arm and put a cast on. I'm talking about your shoes because our feet really aren't designed to be in a cast 24-7. And for many of us, since the moment that we were born, our parents were putting shoes on our feet. And it can really cause a lot of issues in our body from knee pain to back pain uh, to even shoulder imbalances, tension headaches. Because like our nose, um, like our eyes, our feet have sensory organs. And when we're walking, let's say, out on the grass, we're at home or we're at a park and we take our shoes off and the ground is kind of uneven, the sole of our foot is, is sensing the ground. That distortion, those little bony little protrusions on the bottoms of your feet are kind of like sensing the ground. And that's sending signals back to your brain. There's little teeny nerve endings called proprioceptors that are communicating constantly with your brain when you're touching the ground, saying, yeah, you got to use these muscles. Yeah, you have to fire, fire that part of your body. Oh, yeah, that's uneven. Move that part of your foot right there. Yep, yep, do that. And when we put a shoe on our foot, the shoe starts doing that for our body. And our foot no longer is utilizing those, let's call it like those skill sets. And the rest of our body above it is no longer having to move and adapt and stretch and extend and expand like it's supposed to be. And then we start to hear things like, I have fallen arches. Well, I hate to break it to you, arches don't fall. <laughs> that, that, that is not, that, that's not humanly possible. Um, you don't, you aren't born with fallen arches. Um, you aren't born with, with fallen feet. It's just, it's something that happens. It's an adaptation over time to your environment. And your environment, just like Tim, your environment would be like the truck that someone lives in, or your environment would be like I live in Wisconsin, or the environment you live in is the city versus the countryside. An environment you also live in is your shoes and your clothing. And so what are your shoes doing and not allowing your feet to do themselves? And so that's something I want people to kind of think about and pay attention to over the course of the day to day. Like, how often do I actually take my shoes off? How often do my feet actually move around and do things for themselves? As people age, I've worked with thousands of people, especially when I had my yoga studio and, and functional movement center. So many elderly I would see were so scared to take their shoes off. And you'd see them walk around and their ankles wouldn't move and they'd shuffle on the floor. And I'm like, what is the last time you took your shoes off? And they look at me and you would think that they would have to go back and look between, you know, every encyclopedia that they ever owned to go, <laughs> I gotta look back at the A. I'm not sure. But people with sciatica, people with like neuropathy issues, um, people with lower constant lower back pain, what if one solution would be for you, just start small, a few minutes a day, for you to purposefully get your shoes off and move your toes. Walk on uneven ground. That's like out on the grass, not on the concrete. I don't suggest that your body's going to feel that. But get outside and move your feet the way that they're designed to because you got an eighth of all the bones in your body in your foot. You have 33 joints. You have more than 100 tendons. And I have a motto, if you don't use it, you lose it. And when we wear shoes all the time, we are not using it. So it's only natural and only a matter of time before we what? We lose it. And so first things first, for optimal foot health, after a long day at Mid-America Truck Show, 
or after a day of driving or a day at home running errands, get your shoes off. Move your feet around. And if you don't have space to get out like in the grass and walk around on uneven terrain, think about buying like we sell like little little footballs. Um, not like an actual football, but a little ball for your foot that you can roll underneath your feet. We have bumpy ones and we have smooth ones, and that can kind of mimic that uneven terrain I was talking about and stimulating those little bony distortions on the bottoms of your feet to create like a little neuro neuro neurological image in your brain. Those are those proprioceptors again. We got to get your feet talking with your brain so that we don't end up with things like drop foot or we don't end up with things like numbness or tingling, um, or we don't end up with what some people are like, oh, I have sensitive feet. And all of those things are, are a lot of times occurring, I'm not saying it's the only reason, because we're not using our feet the way that they're designed. Wow, that's some pertinent, great pertinent information that we, that we need. And I have an email for you, we're gonna go into a break, but um, let me pull this back up here. Uh, he wants, he wants to know, uh, well, let me just start from the top. I was going to start from the body of it, but he wears, uh, he loves cowboy boots. He's been wearing cowboy boots since he was a teenager. And uh, he wants to know if that has something to do with the uh, foot pain that, he, that he's constantly in. Uh, so anyway, we'll get to that on the other side of these messages. This is Tim Ridley along with Hope, and we'll be right back here on Sirius XM. Kicking foot pain to the curb. Hope Zavara is with us. This is Tim Ridley on Sirius XM. Well, Hope, what about cowboy boots? Uh, the question that our road dog brother has for you. Well, first of all, I I do own cowboy boots. I own probably four or five pairs. And Amen. so I do, <laughs> I do wear cowboy boots. I, I love me a good cowboy boot but I wear them in doses. I'm not gonna wear them 24 seven and, and here's something and here's why to consider and then maybe some stretches to combat them. Um, so when you wear a cowboy boot, it's a really hard sole. There's not a lot of flex to it and the heel is significantly raised, which is shortening the Achilles, Achilles tendon, which is behind the ankle and kind of up into the mid calf. That tendon, when it gets really short, is what's calling, causing like plantar fasciitis pain, um, immobility in the toes. Sometimes a really hard sole like cowboy boots can cause a lot of pain on the top of the foot, especially if the boot is loose. Uh, snow boots will do this for people sometimes because uh, you're gripping up with the toes and then you have strain on the front of the ankle and top of the foot. Sometimes that pain can travel upwards into the knee or even up into the glute or hamstring. And so um, are cowboy boots ideal? No. Um, do I love wearing them? Yes. <laughs> and so it's about being smart. And so before I would put on any pair of shoes for that matter, here's a couple of things that everyone should be doing. I don't care what age you are. I don't care how long it's been since you took your shoes off. I don't care if you've been sleeping in your shoes for the last 50 years and you're like, I don't, I don't even know what my feet look like, Hope. Today is the day that you are going to take your shoes off, take your socks off, and one, just get your feet out of your shoes and look at your feet. Are your toes crooked? Are they smushed together? Or when you stand, do your feet have space? Are you able to lift all of your toes up and almost like you're playing piano keys? The feet over time, when we don't use them, when they're immobilized by shoes, remember you guys, those are muscles down there. They will atrophy. Atrophy means the muscles are dying. The nerves are dying. And so you have to use your feet. And it makes me so sad because once we put shoes on, Tim, it's like out of sight, out of mind. We just forget about them. We forget that we have feet until they stop working for us. And a shoe, a farmer sold shoe is not the solution to foot pain. It's the opposite. You have to break up that tension. If you broke your arm, I don't care what doctor you go to. None of them would say you should wear that cast forever. No, what's the goal? If you break your hip and you get a hip replacement, they're like, we need to get you up and moving. Nowadays, it's like within the first 24 to 48 hours, sometimes within the first few hours, you're up and moving. Why? Because if you don't use it, you lose it. So get your shoes off, move your toes around, 
And then with your shoe off, you can be sitting when you do this if you don't have good balance. Just roll up onto the ball of the foot and try to spread out the toes from the bottom side. And just notice how that feels. That might feel very tension-filled. Your toes might not move that way right now. Remember, everything is an adaptation over time. So if you've been wearing shoes for a really long time and you haven't ever stretched the underside of your toes, that's going to feel a little foreign. So you're going to have to work into it. Try stretching over the tops of the toes, kind of like they're folding, like you'd, you'd grip your knuckles, excuse me, your knuckles on your hand in. And notice how that feels. It's probably going to be a little sensitive. I've had people where they can't even roll over their toes at all. Why? Because they're really stiff. It's almost like rigor mortis. So we have to work those joints lubricate them, break up the tension like a glow stick. You know, a glow stick doesn't work until what? You crack it and you move it around and you shake it up and then all of a sudden it's glowing for hours. Your feet haven't been broken up. They're not glowing. And so we have to just over time start to work this in. And so working through the toes, that's a daily thing for me. In the morning, before I get out of bed, at night, before I go to bed, if I have my shoes off during the day, I'm doing that under my desk so I can keep my feet nice and mobile. The other thing you wanna think about is when you're standing, is stepping back with one foot just slightly and keeping the heel on the ground and trying to bend your knee as much as you can. So that's gonna stretch what we call the Achilles and the calf. That's the backside of your lower leg. And some people will be like, but that's not where my foot pain is. Well, everything is connected. Think of it like a bungee cord. So the tighter your calf is and wearing cowboy boots and even athletic sole shoes, the heel is elevated, that's shortening the muscles on the back of the leg, which is causing you additional foot pain. This is why getting your shoes off to eliminate that pain is essential because you're teaching your body to lengthen that muscle when for the last two, three, five, 20 hours, you've been shortening that muscle. So women that wear high-heeled shoes, cowboy boots, dress shoes, everything has a heel nowadays. Get that shoe off and work through the calf. You can also do this if you're at Mid-America Truck Show. There's those little uh, areas in the main uh, walkway between the wings, like steps. To go by the step and hang your heel off the step. Oh my gosh, it's gonna feel so good. Well. Maybe not good, Tim, but it's going to feel good (laughs) afterwards. But that's going to give some life back to your lower leg and some blood flow and circulation that you can feel like, whoa, I can walk better now. And so it's about really just using your feet in small doses, if you haven't done this very often, over time, walking in barefoot, stretching your feet, creating an artificial environment of natural ground, and that's the rolling out the bottoms of the feet on the little roller balls I was talking about to help stimulate those nerves, help bring blood flow back to the feet, help start to work those muscles again. The good news is, everyone, is that you can restore your feet. You can restore your feet, but you have to work at it a little bit every day. One, All of a sudden, a month later, you know, six months later, a year later, you're gonna be like, wow, I can't believe the things I can do now because my feet are healthy and my feet are happy. Happy feet. That's what it's about. Uh, I have another email for you. Hope, he says, uh, his wife has uh, bad feet. It started from childhood. Uh, Now she wears flip-flops around Mm -hmm. uh, year round. And he wants to know if that's helping or hurting her situation. Yeah, um, flip-flops are a funny thing. Uh, When the shoe is not securely attached to your foot, you have to do a lot of additional gripping with uh, the the toes. With flip-flops, a lot of people are gripping down. It's like you're trying to dig your toes like into the shoe, so the shoe doesn't go flying off. And that can really mess with what's called your gait. Your gait is how you walk. That's your stride. And we all of a sudden start doing kind of funky things with our feet, Now we're doing weird things with our knees, our hips. Now all of a sudden we have back pain. And so although I do like a good flip-flop, I wouldn't utilize it as my everyday footwear. I would consider also buying a sandal that I can securely attach to my foot to allow my toes to rest. So one of the things um, I would suggest to my spouse is for her to pay attention to just for a day when she's wearing her flip-flops how often her toes are gripping or how often the shoes are kind of sliding off her feet 
or maybe if she has knee pain ever, and then maybe trying another form of a sandal and just knowing how different it feels. Sometimes we don't know how bad something is until we try something else and we're like, whoa, how did I ever live that way? Um, and so I don't mind sandals occasionally, but I would not use them as normal footwear. There's a lot of other things that are happening because our foot has to keep that shoe on our foot kind of sloppily um, that may end up causing issues down the road. All right. Well, we received a wealth of information this morning. I hope tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Well, if you're coming to the Mid-America Truck Show this year, Come see us in the West Wing. We're in the main alleyway right when you come into the West Wing, uh, booth 69097. You can get your little foot roller balls. Come say hi. Ask me all your foot pain questions. I'm happy to help you. Uh, but you can always find us on social media and online, Mother Trucker Yoga. Just type it in and we'll pop up. And I would love to know what's going on in your life and how we can help you make some small, simple changes to get you back to feeling great. All right, Hope, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And again, that booth number is 69097 at the MidAmerica Trucking Show. I know a lot of our listeners are headed in that direction as we speak, and I know you'll be heading down there within the next, what, couple of days? Day or t- no, tomorrow is no, Wednesday. Tomorrow, so Tomorrow yeah. morning, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning. All right, safe travels for you, Hope. And again, thank you so much for all you do.